Hi, everyone. Um, firstly, I'd like you to take out one hand and turn to the person next to you. Turn to the person next to you. And now put your hands palm against palm. No, with the person next to you. <laughs> yeah, and now I want one of you to push. Push the other one. Okay. So, um, how many, how many of you pushed back to keep your hands in the same place? And how many of you just let yourselves be pushed? Okay. Well, those are the only two ways that people deal with being pushed around. They either retaliate or they just give up. Hong Kong, as a part of China, as a part of Asia, gets stereotyped with a lot of other Asian countries, especially on the front of strict parents and forced overachievers. A lot of children are brought up being forced into things that they don't necessarily like or want to do, and even more are brought up in fear of their own parents. Obviously, the intention behind pushing your children into doing certain things is a good one. However, since they may not necessarily want to do it or like it, it's not the best way to build a strong bond as a family. Too many people are brought up in fear of their parents, and that's what really needs to change. The way I see it, Forcing someone to do something they don't want to do or don't like doing is like asking someone to get up in front of you and sing a song that they don't necessarily like or know the words to and expecting them to do it well. They're not going to be able to sing it properly. On the other hand, if you let them choose a song and expect them to sing it properly, chances are that they'll choose one that they know well and when they get up, they'll probably be successful at it. I also think that as a child, you should be able to trust your parents. And too many people are brought up in fear of their own and don't have a good relationship with them, which causes a lot of stress and not a lot of experimentation with hobbies. I have a friend who doesn't have the best relationship with her parents right now. And as she grew up, she began to become more rebellious and wouldn't tell them little things, like if she was invited to a birthday party, out of the fear that they wouldn't let her go. The older she got, the more intense her reactions started to be, and one day, she went to the complete extreme and that night ended in a really big disaster with a lot of people involved. Not knowing that your parents are always going to be there for you is one of the biggest mistakes anyone my age could ever make. When I was about seven, until I was about 10 or 11, my parents forced me to do something called Kumon. Kumon is an educational network that teaches through the form of repetition and I had to learn math Mandarin and English through this method, and I hated it so much that sometimes seeing the logo made me want to throw up. One day, I was playing around in my mom's notebook, and I drew a picture. And the picture was a family of bears, being me and my parents. And the smallest bear in the middle, me, was hanging from a noose tied to a tree. On the noose, it said Kumon. Um, I think seeing that photo finally convinced my parents to pull me out of it. But a lot of parents don't see the signs that their children give them when they don't like what they're doing. Anyway, as Hannah said earlier, I do play golf. And as a teenager, I know the stress and the pressure that your parents put on you to do something well. How I started was I was walking through a mall with my dad when I was about four years old. And I saw a photo on the wall of a golfer called Paula Creamer. And she was wearing all pink. And as a four-year-old, obviously, I was attracted to the color pink. And the poster caught my eye. When my dad came back, I asked him, Daddy, can girls play golf? And he was so shocked that I even knew what it was, but I'd seen him watch it on TV, and I had a plastic playset at home, so I was pretty knowledgeable. Anyway, we talked about it, and we established that I wanted to play the sport, and we left that store, we left the store with a little pink golf set, about 50 centimeters tall, that I still have today. Um, I used to hit little styrofoam golf balls around our backyard, and one day, my dad and his friends saw me hitting them and decided I had some potential. And from then on, I started going to training. When I first started training, I was put in a group with only boys. And I was really disappointed about that at first. But it didn't take me that long to catch the basics. And soon enough, I was just as good as all of them. The first experience I ever had at winning something was in that first year of training. We played a friendly competition as a little group of four people. And I came off smiling and happy, a little five-year-old. And I was followed by two seven- or eight-year-old boys that were crying. And they ran to their mom going, Mom, the girl beat us. That's not fair. That's not fair. She cheated. And 
I know it was a long time ago, but I still remember how proud I was at that very moment. The first real tournament I ever played was when I was about seven, and I showed up with my parents, dressed head to toe in a blue tracksuit that looked really ridiculous. My nails were bitten down to stubs because I was so nervous, and I'm pretty sure I almost peed myself multiple times before I even started. All my parents did that day was encourage me to make friends, and even though I did terribly, I had fun, and that was all that really mattered. After about a year of playing competitive golf, I started to mentally toughen up, and soon enough, I started to win. My name began to creep to the top of leaderboards. My expectations of myself grew as I got older, and so did my parents' expectations of me. When I was about 10, I finally got a spot on the Hong Kong golf team, and that was when I really started to feel the pressure. I would practice a lot, and I barely had any friends at that point. When I was about 12, I started to become more social. I wanted to spend more time with my friends, less time on my schoolwork, and less time on my sports. And the more I wanted to go out and be social, the harsher my parents were when they told me that I couldn't because I'd be wasting my talent. They began to push me into practicing when I'll admit I really didn't want to. And I very often had the mindset that I'd rather be out with my friends than playing golf that day. I would begin to go to tournaments and competitions feeling sick because I was so scared of disappointing my parents. Not myself, I was scared of disappointing my parents, and that was the problem. I didn't feel like I wanted to win anymore, and since my practice wasn't as intense as I wanted it to be, I didn't have the confidence that I would be able to either. This is a problem that a lot of children make these days. They're too scared of their parents and what they think of them that they don't try their best at things that they should. Ironically, now that I look back on it, I know that my parents were the only reason I didn't give up in those tough years. Though they were part of my problem at the time, it was only because I was too scared to actually make my own goals and go out and achieve them. If they hadn't been with me every step of the way when I wanted to quit, I would never have been standing up here right now, and I never would have realized that I really was playing the sport for myself. They had to convince me every day that there was no point playing a sport or doing anything if you're not doing it for yourself, and I finally agreed with them. After I realized that I had to play for myself, I started to improve a little bit, but I still wasn't good enough to win again because I was still pressured by them. I believe that everyone, no matter who you are, goes through a breakthrough moment. Be it for a sport or for realizing that you shouldn't lie to your parents, everyone goes through one. And I went through mine last summer. I went on a trip with a group of children around my age that all play golf competitively to America, and we were visiting colleges around the West Coast. During that trip, we only played one golf tournament, and I had the independence that I needed from my parents in the sport at that point. However, I didn't even make the cut at that tournament. I did really bad. And that night after the game, I was devastated. I cried my eyes out in the hotel room. Being so annoyed and so embarrassed about how I played and not even having my parents there convinced me that I was playing this golf, the sport for myself. And after that, I made a promise that I would never feel that embarrassed ever again as long as I was playing the sport. When I got back to Hong Kong, the first thing that I told my parents was, I want more independence in the sport. And they said, OK, that's fine. They were allowed to give me their input and their feedback, but it didn't necessarily mean that I was ever going to listen. As soon as I got back, I also got invited to play the Hong Kong Junior Open, which is a pretty big tournament in Hong Kong. In the lead up to that tournament, I practiced so hard that the calluses on my hands began to split open. And I didn't do it because anyone told me to. I did it because I wanted to prove to myself that I had the abilities and the confidence to win. Now, I don't know if you all know how golf works, so I'm going to give you a quick rundown. It's a game of who can shoot the lowest. Basically, each golf course has a par, and par is the amount of shots that it should take you to get the ball into the hole. In 18 holes of Clearwater Bay Golf Course, which is where the tournament was, the par is 70, which means that if you're a really good player, you should be able to add up your entire 18-hole score of golf shots to 70. Anyway, I went out on the first day of that tournament, pretty confident myself, and I played well. I got a 74 wasn't the best, so after my four-hour round of golf, I went to my dad and said I wanted to practice. 
So for two hours after I was done with that round of golf, I spent a long time hitting ball after ball after ball, trying to rebuild the confidence that I walked in there with that morning. That night when I went home, I was fourth out of maybe 20 people. The next day, I was convinced that I would do better than the last. And I finished that day with a 69. Having a 69, one under 70, jumped me to the lead, and I was leading by three shots for that tournament. The next day, I was so nervous, and I knew the competition was good, and that all I had to do was beat the person in second place. I was so scared, but I just sat on that fear, and I played well anyway. I ended up with a 72, the same as the girl in second place, which meant that I won. I didn't even realize I'd won until people started coming up to me, shaking my hands and saying, oh, congratulations, you played really well. And in that moment, I felt the exhilaration that I'd been missing for so, so long. Anyway, overall, I think that as a teenager and as a child, you should be able to experiment with hobbies and with your life in general so that you're actually able to find your true passion. Um, once that passion is found, however, there needs to be general support behind it. An example of this is my parents, who are over there right now. Um, if they just let me give up in those years that I was playing terrible golf, I would never have been up here right now, and I never would have realized that I really love the sport. Imagine if you have a friend that was really, really good at something. Would you let them quit? That's good. You should never, <laughs> never let them quit if they're good at something. Everyone goes through a point where they want to quit or give up at something that they're good at, but they should never because it's a waste of their talent, it's a waste of their passion. Basically, you should never force someone to sing a song that they don't know the words to. You should never stop someone from singing a song that they do like. And you should just please convince them to find a song that they want to sing. Thank you. Oh.